Hey, bro, let's get into this thing. It's Demasi and Michael, just talking tech. So, technology. <laughs> <laughs> We're on DM41. DM41, dude. So my goal with this was to edit as little as possible, because if we go into it with the intention of editing as little as possible, then potentially we'll be able to get it out sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, I mean, I only have a couple things I was thinking about chatting about. I didn't know about you, what you wanted to chat about. Uh, yeah, uh, as usual, man, like there was a bunch of stuff, but I didn't write any of it down. <laughs> right, right. I did not write what I wanted to chat about in a Google Doc. So, number one, I will tell you, once we get our technology issues working and we're recording and everything's working fine and stuff, uh, virtual windows on desktop is freaking nice. So, are you familiar with the virtual desktops? Yeah, you told me about them when you were, uh, when you were working at the call center place. Yeah, I forgot about them until I set it up on the laptop. Like, those who don't know, you can be on your Windows desktop and tap Control Windows D. This is on Windows 10, 1903 is the one that I've got. And you tap Control Windows D and you'll hear JAWS, I almost said voiceover, say uh, Desktop 2. Um, and then if you press Alt-Tab and you don't have anything open in that desktop, there's like it won't take you anywhere because there's nothing open. So uh, right now I have a recording desktop is how I see it as desktop one. So I have Reaper and now Zoom open so I can record myself and Zoom. And that's all that's in the alt tab order. And then in desktop two, I have uh, like Slack open. I've got Chrome open. I've I think I've got no Thunderbird is closed. Uh, so I'm referring to it as my communications tab. So that way, if I need to look something up real quick, I can hit control, control windows, right area, uh, blah, 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 blah. control windows, right arrow. And that'll jump me over to desktop too. And then I can use alt tab and it'll only cycle me between Slack and Chrome because that's what's open there. So it makes it super easy to organize your desktop windows. Yeah. That was the theory behind, uh, spaces on mac os and i will preface what i'm about to say by saying i did not spend a ton of time tweaking different settings like turning stuff on and off uh but just as a default if you set up spaces on mac os when you're doing command tab uh with voiceover on at least uh you will get taken out of a space and into ah. a different space. So what you have set up is exactly what I thought spaces would be useful for years ago, which is why I was, you know, probably one of the few people in the world that was excited about spaces because I saw the <laughs> benefit. I'm like, hey, I could have, you know, my mail app and uh, messages and, you know, like you said, a communication tab open up. So, you know, that's that stuff over there. But I'm working right now on this thing. So I want, you know, text edit open and, and, uh, Safari and, 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 you know, something else open. And I only want to be able to command tab switch between the apps in this specific space, not to all of the applications that are mm -hmm. open, which eventually is what's going to happen. So if I have three apps open in one space and two open in another space, if, for example, I got Slack, uh, let's say Slack, uh, Chrome, and uh, Mail open in one tab, and if I'm in that that space and I switch from Chrome to, and I'm trying to get to Slack and say it hits Mail, it may take me to you know Slack, or it may take me to an app in another space, or if I have, which is something you should probably check out, is having two different, and I don't say two different instances, but two different browser windows open and separate. Uh, desktops and see what happens there because yep. I know it really trips over that shit right there. Like if I have Safari in one space and Safari in another space, like it it, it gets all fucked up. Uh, but that that's the theory oh. of what it should actually do, and that's what I actually want to happen. Uh, so if anybody knows how to fix that old back OS with voiceover, uh, DM reach out at yourownpay dot com slash dm forty one. Yeah, there you go. I'll try to get that out. <laughs> I will tell you that I can have uh, Chrome with tabs and windows and all that type of stuff because within the browser itself, as you know, you can have different things open. So you press control tab to switch between tabs and, and I think alt tab will switch you between windows. I don't really use windows that much. Anymore. Like, uh, new windows. I know on macOS is command and that little back to, uh, ah, that might windows. be it on, on, on uh, windows. 
goals. I'm thinking maybe that control and that'll work or, uh, there's probably well, no control. Different. Yeah. Either way, I can have different tabs and windows open in one Chrome instance and then be in a different desktop and have a totally different separate uh, set of windows open in Chrome over there. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's exactly what I like. Uh, but yeah. I actually used an app on Windows uh, years ago that gave you a similar feature uh, to the virtual desktops. It was it was basically a virtual desktop, but it was a third party app that you installed on Windows. This is back on seven, I know, maybe ah, XP. good old days. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which is why again, no. you know, I had some experience with using that type of setup. So you know, coming over to the Mac and hearing about spaces, I was like, oh, this shit is gonna be awesome. And uh, <laughs> right. yeah, just never quite, you know, like many things, unfortunately, uh, with Apple, the promise of what the thing is they're creating is nice, right? But they never take it quite as far as you meant for them to take it. So perhaps visually spaces work out fine, uh, because you're, you're mostly mousing or jumping to things that you can see. Uh, whereas with voiceover, it doesn't seem to work in the way that I would like it to work anyway. But that's, that's technology for you. Had to make sure I was recording for a second because I had this sudden chill run down my back saying, you're not recording, but I am. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I, hate when that happens. Uh, I, I, I actually was checking uh, while you were talking earlier. I was checking, was checking all the audio. Like, make sure that recording button is actually super. I ain't did the whole stupid thing where I paused the recording. Did I pause the recording? Okay, no, no, no. We're good. We're good. Okay. With our luck with technology today, it took us 20 minutes to get in to start recording. <laughs> yeah, so that is so weird. That is so weird. But I, I think I know what the problem is, uh, and I'll try to fix it uh, in Brave. Because I've switched to using the Brave browser. Just one, because I want to see what, you know, where where is it going to hit the wall? And I'm like, I need Chrome. Uh, because it's built on Chromium. So in theory, it should work just as well as Chrome. Uh, except without all the Google services built in by default. So, uh, and it's been working fairly well as far as like the things that I would normally have to open up Chrome to do because this site or web app mm-hmm. works better in Chrome than it does in Safari. Things like that have been fine. Uh, but this is the first time I have tried to do a source now call, uh, from Brad. Ah. And they have some settings related to WebRTC that I didn't think about. Like I saw them earlier uh you know when i first started using brave uh and didn't uh didn't fiddle with them because i was like well i'm not gonna touch it because as far as i know it works <laughs> it's not break this you- shit but i'm betting it's something probably to do with that because you could hear me uh but right. i couldn't hear any loud and clear yeah i couldn't hear any output from uh source now like nothing i didn't hear the beeps when you came in and left for anything uh but all my audio uh-huh. settings were you know configured properly like i had the output going to the same place as i have zoom's output going uh I just can hear you weird you know what else is built on chromium Edge, baby. Edge, yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to use that more and more now, too. I was in Chrome just because I didn't want to run into that issue where I didn't know yeah, there's if, like, if I had yeah. all the permissions set and, and this and that. So I did jump into Chrome, but Edge beta is, is slowly becoming my my preferred browser. Yeah, I'm gonna Which check. is something I never thought I'd say. Yeah, nobody thought they would say that. Well, I don't know. I, I thought it was, I was interested when they switched over and said they were going to start building it on Chromium. Uh, I was a little sad because it's like now we're basically down to two browsers. Chrome and Firefox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Instead of having And Safari. Three. So I well, guess three. Because yeah, Safari's Safari is different than yeah. Fire, Firefox, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Have you tried Chrome? Or Edge Beta on Mac yet? I have not. I'm going to install it over here uh, in my clean install of Mac OS probably and play around with it. Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I don't open Chrome. Uh, when I do have to flip over to the other account, I kind of stay out of Chrome because everything crashes in <laughs> Chrome. Like I, there's something really borked up somewhere deep in the system. Like I can't find a file or a folder I need to delete to completely get rid of uh, something mm. related to Chrome. So like Brave will crash, Chrome will crash chrome canary will crash i'm like well there's no point installing edge because it's probably gonna crash too uh (laughs) but i haven't had any problems here uh as of yet but i'm still kind of going through some setup stuff so i do find myself occasionally rebooting and jumping back into the other uh other account to do other stuff uh 
because I just had installed everything here. Right. I did finally get finished recording today, though. Uh, the right before that's what was that's why I didn't see your message at ten thirty five either or or eight thirty five your time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I was in the process of recording uh, an intro to setting up Texas Mander. Ooh, that is exciting. I should record an intro to setting up text expander on Windows because it's kind of a bitch, but it can be done. Good. What are your, uh, so interestingly enough, like, so you would expect that I probably use ScreenFlow, right? But I didn't. I use the built in, uh, screen recording feature of Mac OS, uh, along with loop back to route my audio so I could get me the micro, well, get the microphone and voiceover into the, the mm-hmm. single recording uh, file and it actually worked out pretty good like loopback is a tool I know we've talked about it before uh, on Mac OS that is extremely useful like it is, it is useful in so many different little weird ways that you know just solves a problem it's expensive for a, an occasional use like I use it all the time but for you know a lot of people it's, it's, it's crazy expensive uh, right it's like a, just under 100 isn't yeah, it yeah might as well say 199 yeah. bucks uh, so a hell of a nice <laughs> app. I, what I wish they would actually do is do what they've done with uh, Audio Hijack and Piezo, I think is the simple recording app. Like I yeah, wish they is. would make like a, a simple cut down version of Loopback that maybe you only get the one virtual device that you can use or something like that. But it still would solve a lot of problems for people trying to record, record screencasts or tutorials. And it's not a, you know, lucrative enough uh business for them or such an occasional thing that it doesn't warrant spending a hundred bucks on loop back or uh a hundred bucks on screen flow uh to solve a problem but you do need to get not only your microphone but also some other audio whether it's voiceover or something else into a single recording so from someone who kind of knows the answer to this but not really um why would i need loop back over audio hijack if you're just doing audio, you may not need loopback. Uh, you have to look uh-huh. at the specifics. But in this case, where I was actually using the screen capture uh, feature to record the screen, the way that feature works, uh, so it's not ScreenFlow. Like it, it, it works very much like ScreenFlow does. Like you can record your entire screen, but it's just a built-in Mac OS tool. So you only get one input. Audio hijack, you would need somewhere to point. Like you can hijack your audio. Uh, mm-hmm. But then where, where are you sending it? Like, how does it actually get connected to the audit, to the video file? So in this case, what I did is just created a, a single loopback virtual device. And as it's two, as two, I added two sources. One was the, uh, speech output from voiceover. And the other source was the, uh, microphone that I'm using. I chose that as the input. Uh, as the microphone input into the screen recording application. So it's capturing my screen with the video and using that virtual device to get my microphone audio and voiceovers audio. So it's all a part of the same video file. And then you don't have to worry about editing and mixing things right, down. And making sure right, right, that because that's the problem, right? Because I knew I was going to have to do some editing to the audio. So if I start editing the audio, then it's going to screw up the video. Like I'm not capable of lining up the video because I don't have any references. Uh so, you know, that that could have went sideways very quickly. Audio hijack really is is very good for capturing audio, you know, whether it's uh, like right now, I'm just capturing my microphone audio uh, and going into a wall file. Like that's all I'm doing. That's just it's very basic. You ain't doing nothing. That's it. Uh, but more complex things you can do with it, you know, as you know, is, you know, you can record the audio output from just about anything on your Mac and have it go wherever you want it to go. Usually that is going to be a recorded file or, uh, some kind of output block where it's going to be like your headphones or speakers or something like that. Uh, they do have a broadcast block, which is nice. So you can, you know, live stream audio. Uh, but it doesn't really give you the ability to sort of combine your audio. So you can combine your audio sources. Uh, bleh, boy, that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All them audio sauces. Yeah, the the audio the sauces, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was country as hell. That's red part me laughing her ass off. That shit came out real country. <laughs> audio sauces. Uh. You can combine your audio sources. Yeah. <laughs> you can combine your audio sources with Audio Hijack into one single file, but that's just audio. It doesn't, what Audio Hijack doesn't really give you the ability to do, 
to do without an application like Loopback uh, added to it is the ability to say, okay, I want to take my audio from my microphone and I want to take the audio from Zoom and I want to take the audio from VoiceOver and I want to send it to a different application so that Mm -hmm. all of that audio combined can become the input for another application. That's the problem. So for example, uh, solves. Go ahead. So, for example, with Loopback, you could set up some sources to grab some music and play it through Zoom because you have Loopback, and and so it's like an, a separate virtual audio driver. Right. Fun times. One thing that I hate about Windows now that I just discovered, and I think I figured out how to fix it, is uh, your. So I have Unigram. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a Telegram app on Windows that is super accessible and super easy to use. Um, I have it installed and it's on my communications window and all my freaking notifications kept going through. So when you're talking, I'm trying to shut it up real quick. But if you tap the windows key, type in do not, you find a uh, focus mode. And if you turn focus mode on, then only priority notifications will come in. And I type do not because I was looking for do, do not, not disturb. disturb. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So windows is smart to know what I was looking for, even though it's not called that. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the uh, uh, that's one of the nice things about Windows too, especially with uh, the way that they've changed up so many of the locations of where settings and stuff are, is that you can't always mm-hmm. use that search to get there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see a lot of people using that. <laughs> uh, somebody called me uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, "I think it was you that helped me make Firefox my default browser on, on Windows 10." And I was like, mm, "It's possible." Well, I need to change it back to Internet Explorer. So obviously, I didn't remember how to do it because I, I don't know. Like I know, I feel it was Windows Seven or any version prior to that. I could have told you because it was always in the same place. But I didn't know how to get there, so I was like, "Well, hit your Windows key and type default." Uh, like, oh, set up default application. I'm like, yeah, hit return on that. All right, now let's find the browser tab, and then we're gonna pop that open, and then just choose Internet Explorer and hit save, and there you're done. It's like, all right, see. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it, it was an example of like me even being able to, you know, help somebody solve a problem uh, over the phone just because of I I have enough trust in the search capabilities of Windows that I knew I could probably find the thing I was looking for. One thing I used that I've never really used before. So at work, Barry came to me and he goes, hey, can you find this file? And I'm like, who's the client? He goes, I don't know. And so I actually used the search field in Windows Explorer. And I was very impressed with how well that that worked. Apparently, there are some other third-party tools uh, to to help index. Uh, it, it, the ones that I've found don't look like they work that well on networked drives, uh, which would be my only problem. But there are some tools out there that will help index that and make the search a lot faster. But by default, on Windows 10, I was, I was super impressed with the search abilities in Windows Explorer. Yeah, I, I think as time progresses, we try things early on. And because they fail, uh, we don't usually go back to them. Uh, yep. because like finder search on the Mac is really good. Uh, I have made use of the windows Explorer search quite a bit when I was using windows because it was, you know, basically the only way to find the thing I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> oftentimes we, we don't look at, you know, the default solutions, uh, as much like that's one, one of the reasons that I took the path I did to record, uh, the beginning, at least tutorials, uh, for getting, you know, setting up text expander on the Mac is because I was like, well, there's a built in tool in Mojave that will let me record the screen. And all I need to do is go install loop back so I can set up a virtual device to combine, combine two separate sources into one input. So I can choose that as the microphone input. Like that's the only thing that I actually needed to do. Uh, and it worked like, and it, now you have a video. Yeah. Now I have a video file, um, worked perfectly you know fine so uh, oftentimes i think it's worth revisiting uh defaults uh there are some cases where i'm just not interested in revisiting defaults like uh, i'm not interested in exploring spotlight so we're not having a conversation <laughs> about spotlight on the mac because that's just it ain't happening uh, too many, uh, what are they called, extensions or shortcuts set up in launch bar that you're so used to typing. Well, it's that, and there's things that I know I can't do with Spotlight. So why 
complicate the process mm-hmm. by having two different applications. Well, I'll use Spotlight to launch my apps and find documents, but then, oh, I need to, uh, to grab a file from the finder window that I'm in and drop it somewhere else so it'll open up in TextMate. Uh, oh, so let me I launch LaunchBar like, oh, no, see, so yeah, no, just, we'll just keep LaunchBar there. Uh, that's a, I miss being able to just send a document straight into a mail message. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what I did the other day. Oh, shit, I forgot to send you this document, too. I will send it to you uh, today. Uh, but that's how I sent Desiree that document the other day. That's why I was like, oh, I'll send it to you right now. Now. <laughs> so I'm looking at it. It's like, no, let me do it right now. So what else is going on, man? Doing a lot of production work at work. Um, you, learning more about Reaper and automation tools in Reaper, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, envelopes and panning and volume adjustments and stuff because – I realized that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew, which is always a a uh, disconcerting feeling sometimes. <laughs> uh, really? But aside from that, not not a whole lot. Uh, oh, I did recently install Simeon, which is the automation system we are using on three of the eight stations on this laptop. There's a trial version you can get. And I'm glad I did not install JAWS on the station computers because I realized how inaccessible Simeon was, at least without the the scripts that I've heard illicitly exist from BSI, which is a company that produces Simeon, but I haven't been able to find them anywhere. So if anyone has JAWS scripts for Simeon, let me know. Although they really won't do me much good because the goal is... Well, the goal was by July to get all the stations switched over to the new system. Now the goal is by the end of the year to get all the stations switched over to the new system, which is completely different than Simeon. So I'm working on uh, teaching myself to script so I can make this tool a lot more accessible. So, for example, uh, one of the actions that we have to take inside of a tool called File Manager is we choose a station, and that's in a tree view on the left, and then you... If you press enter on carts, which is inside that tree view, it does nothing. Uh, What you have to do is you have to route the JAWS cursor to the virtual PC cursor, double left click on the carts uh, item inside the tree view, and then that will drop you into the carts and you can see what carts are in there. And then you have to do the same thing to open a specific cart, route JAWS to virtual PC, left or uh, insert 88, I think it's 8. Yeah, insert A8, and it'll left click on. Now I've got to check that keystroke real quick because I, I think it's you'll insert understand why here in a second. Star. Yep, it's, it's JAWS key plus A. It's the same as clicking the left mouse button. Ah, okay. So you insert A8 on the cart itself, <laughs> and then it will open that cart. So what I ended up doing is with a, a tool some might have heard of called Hotspot Clicker is I found those actions and I, I set up some some basic scripts that now if I hit Control-Alt-Enter, it will route v- draws to virtual PC, left-click, left-click. So it's almost equivalent to being able to just hit Enter and uh, uh, be able to access those things. So I don't have to worry about all those extra keystrokes, which is pretty cool. But now i got to learn more about scripting. Yeah. Because it's very rudimentary, but it gets done what needs to be done for the most part. Hey, man, that's that's uh, that's always a start. Uh, you know, figure yeah. out a solution and make that work, and then eventually, you know, you you continue working on it. Unless it's something that you don't do. If it's something you do a lot of, you know, often you're gonna, you know, continue to tweak. Uh, the way that that works is you learn more about how to more advance, more advanced ways to uh, script things. Just on a side note, Zoom is. F- fucking horrible <laughs> you have faded in and faded out like i know you've moved a little bit off the mic and came back but that's not it like i can tell when you're on the mic and when you're off the mic uh-huh. if that makes sense but yeah. zoom is like fucking with your audio like really bad like it's, it's, it's well it's, it's a good thing that i'm recording locally exactly but this is the point of why i say i cannot use a fucking zoom recording and put it out there in the world and be like hey here's mm-hmm. your thing like no it's fucking horrible anyway yeah um and I was going to say something else, but I don't remember what it was going to be because it distracted me. It was related to scripting. Yeah, when I remember, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, dog, what about on your end? What have you been up bro. to with your technology? Oh, man, some interesting things. I feel like I've been doing a lot, but at the same time, I feel like I haven't been doing much of shit, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, 
there are a couple of things that I'm looking forward to accomplishing with WordPress, which is uh, one, building us an entire sort of virtual back end office system where we mm-hmm. have all of our disparate products and services kind of connected together. So if we need to jump over and send an invoice or if we need to, you know, log in and, and do this or do that or something like that, you know, building us a nice back end system so that we have processes in place. If we're onboarding a new client, uh, or anything like that. If we're doing tax documents, you know, signing documents. Uh, speaking sending of invoices. signing, do- yes, yeah, sending invoices. Speaking of signing documents, if anybody out there listening has, uh, some suggestions on tools that we can use to create, we're not just trying to sign electronic documents because that's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, but what we need to be able to do, uh, with some tools that are accessible to screen readers is actually create the document that somebody else is going to be signing. Like if anybody has mm-hmm. any experience in that space, any suggestions, uh, the things that we have looked at up to this point are, uh, DocuSign. Uh, I think that's the name of the company. Yeah. DocuSign. Yeah. Uh, I did not during the trial period find it accessible enough to where I could, you know, format the document out and say, here's where the signature needs to go, et cetera, et cetera. Perhaps I missed something because it was a, 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 one of those situations where I started the trial, didn't immediately go look at stuff. And then when I did start to go look at stuff, like I was trying to take in everything I possibly could as quick as possible to see if Mm -hmm. this was going to be something I needed to pay for or not. Uh, but I didn't find it accessible for actually creating a document. Signing documents with DocuSign is actually for fairly straightforward. I've done it several times over the years. Yep. Uh, I just signed a cell phone agreement with DocuSign a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's the last <laughs> thing I signed with DocuSign was a cell phone agreement. It was actually was an equipment agreement for my kids. So that's Sign what I thing. meant, equipment agreement yeah. for a Pixel XL. Yeah, but same thing. Uh, I also, Mallory's upgrading the phone size on huh? Yeah, she decided to keep that device uh, versus iOS, which, yeah, kind of actually not a bad experience. And then with Android 10, I almost said Q for a second, with Android 10, um, I need to check with her to see if she can see it. But I can see when she's typing me messages. I can see when she's read my messages. So there's that that, uh, feedback available in the native messaging app messages app not messaging not to get confused with facebook but yeah uh, which is pretty awesome and that that carries over to the to messages.google.web the, yeah, or, say, like, that's yeah. a big advantage like now you also can access that on uh on is that something that just works on windows or did that also work on the mac uh, no it works on the mac too okay that's good that's good yeah yeah i gotta pick yeah. me up another android phone uh probably gonna need it axl is a pretty nice device and I finally used it with TalkBack and and it's pretty snappy. a similar experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh I'm, I'm like I said Black Friday around that time they should be on sale to yep. where I can just pick one up uh, cuz I do like it. Uh, I do want to continue to be able to test things out with Android. Uh, I was thinking about it last night funnily enough. I'm like, you know, Mike has introduced a situation, a scenario uh for us with blind employment that we didn't previously have, but I knew it was going to eventually become an issue. (laughs) We were going to have to address for people uh, that we're trying to help, which is what do you do when everybody's using something different? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because Mike's on windows uh, and Android. Uh, The biggest problem before that was that, you know, me and Mike were using certain tools on on the Mac and certain services and Desiree's over here just stuck in Microsoft land and like she ain't coming out. So like that that, <laughs> that is still going to be a problem. Like I, I still don't know how to actually solve that problem. But yeah, I got to figure something out on Windows because I t- at this moment do not have uh, Microsoft Office installed. And when you open, you can open a Word document in WordPad, but man, you lose all your formatting. Yeah. It, 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 it. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing that happens in tech text edit on the Mac like I don't I don't uh you know but I don't oh, I'm usually when I'm opening a word document it's not for me to send it back to somebody it's for me to copy out what they did and turn yep. it into HTML basically you know convert the markdown and make it HTML so it doesn't become such a big issue to me uh one thing that you might want to look at Mike and I've been thinking about looking at some of these tools too just to look at the accessibility of them is like open office and libre uh-huh. office uh to see what the accessibility is like because they're uh, designed to handle the, you know, the office documents, the Word documents, Excel, spreadsheets, all of that stuff. Uh, and they're free as far as I remember. I think they're both free. I like free. 
Uh, <laughs> well, to me, like it doesn't make sense to pay for work if you only use it, you know, on these rare occasions. Um, yeah, which is yeah. why I don't no longer pay for the Office 365 because like I'm, I'm not using Word at all, I'm not using any Office products at all. So it did make sense to pay for them. Apparently, Remington's not using it either. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's like, fuck that. I got, I got my markdown text editor, man. I'm cool. Do you have anything else you want to chat about? Oh, man, not particularly. All right, Demasi, how can they find you on Twitter? Oh, man, I don't know. I'm at Demasi on Twitter. Uh, although, <laughs> you know, look, if I don't respond to you on Twitter, let me interject this because, you know, I'm still a Twitter riffing user on uh, iOS. I have not switched over to the default or the, 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 uh, well, not built mm-hmm. in, but you know, the, the, the official Twitter the from native. Twitter app, yeah, the native Twitter app. Yeah. So I don't get notifications anymore. So if he doesn't respond to you, don't take it personally. You can go drop him a comment at your own pay.com forward slash DM 41. And we might get back to you faster than reaching out on Twitter. But if you have any answers to the questions that, that we're, yeah, just tweet at me. I do post. check Twitter riffy routinely. So at Demasi, D A M A S H E. I do routinely check it. Uh, so, you know, if you don't get an instant response, just know it's because, uh, Twitter, are bunch of jerks and they removed the ability for third party apps to send <laughs> notifications so that's why and i am boycotting the actual official twitter app just because of that i'm like you will not force me into your box uh sir <laughs> i will not go peacefully uh or quietly into your right. box and start using twitter now mike is using twitter so you can tweet him <laughs> at pay on p-a-y-o-w-n and before remy has anything else to add to this episode i think that'll be it You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.